We're back on the show talking to the big stars and a new star in the last 18 months has shot to fame after appearing on Britain's Got Talent. Farrell Smith has got the voice of an angel and was so popular on the programme she's had two hit CDs. Her newest CD, Winter Wonderland, has just been released and I caught up with her and asked her, with having such a perfect, beautiful voice, was she born singing? I always kind of was a musical child. I um, I mean, my parents aren't, aren't musical at all and I've, only, I've got a bit of um, Welsh in my family. But apart from that, I don't know, I kind of, it's just all been down to me, really. <laughs> Do you remember the first point when somebody turned to you and said, my God, you can sing? Yeah, I mean, the first time where loads of people were coming up to me like, oh, you've got a really good voice, was um, probably, I did um, um, I did a like, nativity play at school and uh, we were all practising and the teacher said, I can only hear Farrell singing, so she might as well do it as a solo. So, uh, <laughs> so I did it as a solo and then everyone sort of came up to me and was saying, oh, you've got a really good voice and my mum didn't really know kind of what to do with me. So we just uh, joined the choir and then that went to singing lessons and competitions and it's so hard to kind of get a break in in sort of music and with shows like Britain's Got Talent and The X Factor I mean it's like literally you go on the show and all of a sudden you, you're out there and people know who you are and I mean it's, it's quite strange but it's great Do you think it really helps to be gorgeous to be a winner on a programme like that because nobody wants me to win do they? <laughs> um, I think if you obviously have to kind of have like the whole package as they say and but I think with shows like Britain's Got Talent like when they sort of they pick out the talent as much as they do sort of like with the look it kind of doesn't really matter as much as the talent but obviously when you're sorting like when you're doing albums and things people if there's if there's a front cover of an album and it looks good you, you're going to buy it so um, yeah I think it sort of it, it helps <laughs> and I think my favourite track off this brand new album is The Prayer how hard is a song to sing like that because it sounds incredibly difficult The Prayer is probably one of my favourites and I was quite worried because obviously like you said a lot of people have done it but um, I don't know we kind of it was, it's always been one of mine and my mum's favourite songs so I really really wanted this one on and um, I've all, I love it as a duet and, and I think um, but as a solo some people kind of when, when some people sing it it sounds like really good so I kind of just wanted to try it myself I know you're still only young, but let's go back a bit further when you were just a kid and singing. Was it a curse and a blessing at the same time? Because you don't want to be the old one out of school, no matter how talented you are. Um, It wasn't difficult for me at all, I think, because everyone was really good um, with me at school. And they all kind of treated me as like, like they still do kind of treat me like as a normal person. And I prefer it like that, because then when you go home, you can act normal and you don't like people aren't watching you like all the time. And I think when I was on Britain's Got Talent, Obviously, people were coming up and saying, oh, you're really good. And they're saying, asking questions and things like that. But it was OK, really, because I didn't exactly get any anything bad. They were all really nice. And then you go from being just a normal school kid to being in front of 10 million people on Britain's Got Talent. How do you deal with that? <laughs> um, I really don't know. I think before I go on, I kind of try and block everything out and kind of pretend that I'm just doing it on my own. But it is quite hard when uh, you have um, all those judges sitting there staring at you in a massive audience. <laughs> but um, no, it was OK. I was, it was very nerve wracking. But once I hit that first night, I'm usually OK. Do you just forget about the TV audience? Because if you did consider that number of people, you'd go nuts, wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, with um, when I was on Britain's Got Talent and uh, when I do things um, like, like with a camera in a studio and things like that, I do completely forget about all the people sin- sitting at home. And um, because like when you're performing, I only think about the people that I can see. And, and I think that's the best way anyway, because I'd be even more nervous. <laughs> and of course, you're a professional singer. You're on your second album. Everybody knows who you are. How nervous do you get when those big notes are on the way and you know you've got to hit them? Um, I don't actually get that nervous really I think if I if I practice it then it should be okay but um, I mean like when um, I have songs which is at the the very highest that I can get I think then sometimes I get a bit nervous but I've always been told to like not tense up before I go to a high note otherwise it probably won't come out <laughs> but um, so I just kind of like stay relaxed and let it come out itself really. And of course since being a star you've met loads of fascinating people not just me and Anton Deck who have you enjoyed meeting? <laughs> Um, I really, really don't know. I think probably the oh, um, 
I performed with Jose Carreras and that was a big moment and to even meet him let alone sing with him I mean the three tenors to me are like the, the best singers in the world and to be able to sing with like sing with Jose Carreras it was mad and I suppose the world's your lobster at this point where do you go next well I've always loved acting so um, I think the to be in an opera would be the top thing like I mean if I got into an opera I think that'd, that'd be it like that's the furthest that's the the top for me if you know what I mean and that'd be fantastic and of course anything's possible now because Simon Cowell's backing you what's he like <laughs> as a real person well he was absolutely he was like lovely backstage and um, even like he wasn't just there for the show I mean he was there at rehearsals and he's always there if you need advice and if you were having a bit of trouble he'd always just be there and he'd um, he'd make time for you and I mean obviously um, for all the parents and everything if they've got children in it it's quite hard for them to kind of watch their children get up there and perform and um, I mean for, for my parents as well because I was only 12 it was obviously quite hard for them but he, he was there for everyone and he was really really nice Well listen I think you're tremendous you got the voice of an angel Thank you and It's a pleasure talking to you on the programme Farrell and your new album's in the stores now See you soon Tana. Thank you very much for having me